Hey guys, happy September 1st. Today's video are all of my favorites from the month of August. I didn't have any fails, but I have to be honest with you guys, as far as my skincare, I haven't really changed or added any new products. I'm still using the Peach Slices products that I mentioned in last month's favorites, but I do have some sunscreen favorites that have been winning. Many of them I have been sharing with you on my shorts, which you guys seem to be enjoying. First one is a Japanese sunscreen I've used in the past and recently repurchased. I got it on Amazon actually. It's the Skin Aqua UV Super Moisture Milk. This is a combination sunscreen. It has zinc, octinoxate, and uvenal A plus to offer broad spectrum UVA and UVB protection. It's also water resistant. This product goes on like a dream. It's very moisturizing. It's not greasy, it's not heavy. It doesn't have any low molecular weight alcohols, which some people find drying. It's very moisturizing. It has hydrolyzed collagen in it, which is mostly just a humectant. I mean, it's not like it's actually putting collagen in your skin, but that does help impart moisture to the skin and improve moisture retention. It doesn't pill up. And if you wear makeup, you can wear makeup over it comfortably. Highly recommend this. I am able to wear it around my eyes and on my eyelids with no issue either. Highly recommend it. A lot of you guys got it after my shorts or you know maybe saw it on my Instagram and y'all have been letting me know how much you like it. And then another Japanese sunscreen that I have always loved um, is the Ali from Kanebo, Ali sunscreens. And this is the extra UV facial gel. This too is a combination sunscreen. It has zinc, octinoxate, Uvenal A+, and Uvenal T150. It is water resistant. This one is a little more sh on the shiny side, however, than the Skin Aqua UV Super Moisture Milk. And this one, unlike the Skin Aqua one, does have alcohol denaturant in it, and you actually can smell it as it's going on. Both of these, by the way, are fragrance-free, if I didn't already say that. Um, the alcohol denaturant, you know, it's not a bad ingredient, but some people do find that it is more on the drying side. I happen to think this particular formulation is very good for people with oily skin. I mean, both are good for oily skin, but I think if you have dry skin, you may butt heads with the alcohol denaturant. Although honestly, after I put this on, I find that my skin doesn't feel dry or anything. However, I live in a very humid climate and August is our hottest month. These have been perfect for me in the month of August. Now, if you live in a cold, dry climate, I don't know how well these will perform for you, especially this one with the low molecular weight alcohol, you may find it to be on the drying side. But overall, both of these are very good, free of fragrance. I got this one on YesStyle and this one on Amazon. This came a lot faster than this. Last month, you'll recall, I mentioned a favorite sunscreen of mine is the Epiance Ultra Shield SPF 50. I'm almost finished with this one, actually. I don't know if you can tell through the packaging, but I have about that much left. Um, anyways, I'm still loving that, almost finished with it, but this past month I've been using the Daily Shield Tinted. I'm wearing it currently, but I'm just gonna put a little bit on here so you can kind of see. I have my ring light on because it's cloudy out and rainy, so I don't know how well it'll show up. You can kind of see. I like this, it gives the skin a nice hydrated glowy look without being greasy or shiny. It's fragrance free and it has, because it's tinted, it has iron oxides, which can offer some additional protection against the pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light that affect deeper skin tones and also that cause free radicals, more free radicals, you know. So there's some evidence that tinted sunscreens can help offer protection against that in addition to the sunscreen ingredients, zinc and titanium, which protect you from UV rays. It is formulated with silicones, but this one doesn't have that kind of buttery, slippery consistency to it that like the MD Solar Science tinted mineral cream that I really love has. So if you didn't care for that formula, don't dismiss this. It's quite good. It doesn't have that kind of buttery, slippery feel to it but it does give the skin a nice hydrated, healthy glow. It's moisturizing, but not greasy. And because it is formulated with silicones, it allows for shine reduction and better evaporation of sweat so you don't overheat with it. Epiance is a brand in the skin store sale that's currently going on now until September 7th. Definitely take advantage of it if you are in the market for some sunscreens because these are on sale. And if you use my code DrDre10, you can get an additional 10% off the sale price of these. So you can save even more. So I'll put that down in the description box. But yeah, I've been happy with the tinted formulation over this past month. That is it, you guys, as far as skincare, those three sunscreens. 
this past month I've been consuming a lot of media. I always read books, but I've been watching movies and so I, I've also been going back to my library. It's open and back up and operational as it always was in the past. So I'm happy to be, have returned to the library this past month. And I got this book by Patrick Taylor that I rather enjoyed. It's called An Irish Country Cottage. I didn't realize it when I picked this book up, but it's part of a series about these, uh, it's like a small town, a small Irish community, and these doctors there taking care of people in the town. It starts out with this family whose house burned down and how the town kind of, you know, comes to help them. There's this couple that's struggling to get pregnant. I mean, it's kind of a wholesome story, pleasant read. It's not emotionally draining <laughs> or exhausting. It's the perfect thing to read before bed. It's entertaining, it's well-written, it's enjoyable, it's captivating, but it's not keep you up late worrying about the state of affairs of the world. <laughs> It's, it's a great escape read. So I would enjoy reading more, more books in this series. Comment below and if you have read any of the other Patrick Taylor books, what did you think? Is this representative of them? Because I rather enjoyed this. Speaking of library, this was a library win. This vegan slow cooker cookbook. I cannot recommend this enough. Even if you don't follow a vegan diet, definitely give this, give this a peruse because the recipes in this, I made several. They did not disappoint. Um, they were all very, very good. The whole book is, 90% of the book is slow cooker recipes. And then in the back, she has a section of recipes that are just kind of like staples, how to make beans from scratch, how to make your own aquafaba, and how to make vegan cheese. Those staples aren't necessarily slow cooker, but then the staples are used in the slow cooker recipes. But what I really liked about this book is that the recipes are unique. They're not just like, here's a vegan Reuben sandwich, here's a veggie burger, here's split pea soup, like, you know, the basics that are in every vegan cookbook, here's a smoothie bowl. <laughs> They're innovative, but the ingredients are not too exotic or overly complicated and everything except that back section is all in the slow cooker. There are recipes for like cakes, breakfast casserole type things. There's a recipe for pizza, but the thing I made the most out of this and was such a win, I, I made it over and over again and used it in a variety of the recipes was the vegan cheese. Really good, the cashew cheese. Highly recommend this book. Really easy to follow, nice pictures. There are a lot of really good recipes too for fall and winter in this. So if you are looking for some recipe inspiration for like some hearty stews, check this out. Even if you're not vegan, the recipes are really, really good. Yeah, I made the stuffed artichoke soup and it was delicious. Oh, I made the mapo tofu. That was really good. This is what I wanna make next, the sage walnut pesto. I thought that looked really easy and delicious. You can get it on Amazon, but check your local library. I mean, get it for free. I always like to get cookbooks from the library because if you don't like the cookbook or the recipes don't turn out, then you're not like stuck with the book. <laughs> but if you like the recipes, then you can buy it. Movies, I watched a lot of really good movies this past month. I watched Across the Tracks. It's a movie from the 90s with Brad Pitt and it is really good. It's about two brothers and Brad Pitt is like, the golden child, he's like on the track team, you know, he does everything right. And then the other brother is like the bad seed. <laughs> he gets into trouble and they're always like butting heads. It's a really good story. I won't give away too much. The actors in the movie, they play teenagers and they have like acne and normal looking teenage skin. Not, you know, <laughs> this glowy skin that Hollywood kind of makes it seem as though, oh, you don't have skin like this. They have more normal skin with, you know, blemishes and whatnot, so. And then the other movie that I watched was A Place in the Sun. This is a movie from the 50s with Elizabeth Taylor. And I can't remember the other actor's name, but it's about this guy who comes to this town and works in this factory, gets involved with this woman, in the factory, even though he's not supposed to. It's like the rules of the factory that the men and women 
aren't supposed to date, like they're not supposed to, the, guy, the men are prohibited from like having relations with any of the female employees. But anyways, he breaks that rule like from day one and gets involved in this with this woman. But he kind of like, I don't know, has these aspirations of grandeur, I guess. And he gets involved with this wealthy family, kind of wants to work his way up the financial ladder and make some unsavory choices and just kind of acts like a jerk kind of see how money can make people do things that are not so good. So I rather enjoyed that movie. I recommend it. And then the other movie that I watched, which has become my favorite movie, I cannot get it out of my head, is Leaving Las Vegas with Nicolas Cage. And I always blank on her name, the gal from Adventures in Babysitting. This is a movie from the 90s. And Caution, this movie is very graphic. And so if you don't like that, then don't watch this movie, but it's really good. It's about a alcoholic and the movie kind of makes it seem like it's glamorizing alcoholism. But I think a part of it is that a lot of what he's going through is alcohol withdrawal during points of the movie. Cause you can see him like getting visible visibly ill, shaking, having the sweats and everything. I think there are a lot of portions of the movie he's about to go through alcohol withdrawal and he has, he's delirious. So I think a lot of what is happening to him, he sees through that lens. And Nicolas Cage really, really got into the role and did an amazing job. In fact, he got inebriated for one of the scenes I know. I learned that recently. And it's based on a true story of this, I think this Hollywood writer who had a similar problem. And then apparently he took his own life after the movie came out, which is very, very sad. But yeah, I highly recommend this movie. It's really good. I like movies about addiction. I, I don't know why. I love that movie, um, Requiem for a Dream and Train Spotting. All right, last but not least, I cut my hair finally. If you missed it in my vlogs, um, I did finally cut my hair. People were asking me like, was my plan to just keep growing it out? No, I never planned to even grow it out as long as it got. I just didn't make time to go and get a haircut. I finally did and it feels a lot better <laughs> to have that weight off the ends. And so I'm happy with this length because I can still put it in a ponytail or I can put it in a bun, but I can wear it down comfortably without it like talking to the neighbors. <laughs> yeah, so August was a good month for me. Uh, it, it wasn't as hot here. I know I'm always commenting on the weather, but August notoriously is like the hottest month. And yeah, it's been hot, but not as bad as it could have been. Fingers crossed though, going into September, that is hurricane season and Hopefully nothing bad happens. Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments how August went for you. What did you love? Did you watch any movies? I've been watching movies on Amazon Prime now that I nixed Netflix and I, I'm, I'm never looking back on Netflix. Um, Amazon Prime has been winning. So let me know if there's a good movie on Amazon Prime I should check out. If you all enjoy these monthly favorites videos, on the next slide, I will put my July favorites video, the last favorites video that I did, if you wanna check that out. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow, bye.